Hello everyone and welcome back to Galahad Games. Today we are going to take a look at the game The Dwarves. This is actually based off a book by Mark Heitz. This game here was developed by King Art and published by THQ Nordic and Eurovidia Medin. You know what? Let's jump right in here. Now, I do have the music turned off because copyright issues can only... Fracas made us from stone to protect Gardelgard. Should be very dramatic music here. Against orcs, ogres, and all the other beasts of Teon. We are the guardians of Gardelgard. We are the children of the Divine Smith. We are the Dwarves. Alrighty, yeah, I'm sure there would have been some very dramatic music there. Oh, here we go. Looks like the audio's loaded in, but not the full game yet. I have not read the book. Pause the game anytime by pressing space. Move the camera by using the middle mouse button and the mouse wheel. All right. On the way. Use leap. Click on leap attack on the lower left of the screen or press E. Then select your target on the battlefield. Okay, I'm saying I did not read the book, but I'll have to look it up after this. I, I always like a good fantasy novel. Charge! I'm seated! So the game is very point and click. You right click on a guy, they go over, attack him. Basic attacks don't seem to do too much. Lost my cursor. Oh, uh, we hit a wall and fell over. All right. Charge. Ha! And again. All right. I remember I got this game here, quite you. a while ago. Ha! I didn't actually play it. It was in oh, early access. And again. Ooh, we are getting All right. demolished. Understood. Charge! Landling, a present from the workshop. But yeah, the game was in early access, and I just—I don't know. I played like maybe five minutes of it. It was a bit buggy, so I was like, "We'll come back to it when it's more developed." Ah. I'd be happy to pass on this present to the Greenskins. On the way! So far, the game's playing pretty good. On the game! All right! The only thing I have is I keep losing my cursor. Our health's coming back. Come here, you. That's good. Ha! Understood. Yeah, although I've played the game before, it was so long ago, I don't Charge! remember any of this. Understood. Last 
hear dramatic music. My king! What are you doing here? Gizelbert I and I, the father of the Fifthling clan, has not been on the front line of battle against the creatures of Teon for many cycles. The king surveys the battlefield and the defenders with a grave expression. <sighs> we are too few. This you know as well as he does, but there will be no reinforcements arriving. Hundreds of brave warriors lie inside the fortress dying. The illness is running rampant. It brings weakness and death. Stay at your posts. Be as steadfast as the granite of which we are made. Nothing can break us. Vrakas is with us. Change between characters at the bottom left of the screen or by pressing tab. Select more than one at a time by pressing shift left click or by clicking and dragging a rectangle around them. Another thing it doesn't tell you is you can use the number keys to also change heroes. Hammer time! While the game is paused, spacebar, you can give commands to several heroes in a row, which are executed simultaneously once the game is resumed. Keep hitting the number key. There, we don't want to hit our own guy. Oh, sweet. We can literally throw them off the bridge. It will be so. Hammer time! <laughs> What's that? Over there! Yes? Huh? Oh. What? That helps. I keep hitting the number keys instead of the QWE. I'm liking Glandolin better. Yes. I thought they were going to retreat. Missed the whole destroy catapults. Cleared the bridge a little bit there. What is it? Understood. There. Make way, I make see. way. <laughs> yes. Ah! Come here, you. Ah! Just take down the catapults. What is it? Yes. <laughs> it will be so. Huh? Ah! On the way. One down. Losses beating them back. Come here and I'll split you like a straw, you treacherous elf! In his fury, the old king radiates a ferocious power that none of Sitalia's children could withstand. But the slight, willowy being sitting astride the shadow mare just grins down mockingly. You are mistaken. We are Alpha. We are here to destroy the elves. 
All peace-loving beings here in Girdlegard are under our protection, and you cannot open the gate that has barred your path into Girdlegard since the creation of the world. Not us, but perhaps one of your kind. This cannot be. Silence, you fool! Vrakas, forgive me for what I am about to do. Quickly! Information! You must hold them back until I close the gate! <laughs> Well, at least they gave us our axe back. Below it Come deals here, good ah. damage. Understood. Ah. On the way. All right. On the way. I thought those arrows coming from behind were hitting us, but they were our allies. Look at me. I am Syntharas, the Reaper of your death. I will take your life, and the land will take your soul. Get out of my sight, pointy ears, and let me delight at the closed gate a little longer. The gate may have closed, but when you rise again from the dead by the power of the land, you will be one of us, and you will open it. Never! My soul belongs to Brakas. No, your soul now belongs to the land. And henceforth, you will belong to it forever. Now die. And return. Then, hand us Girdle Guard. Well, that was interesting. 1.035 cycles later. You're a perfectionist, Tungdil Bolifar. I've got a reputation to uphold. If you can't rely on the metalwork of a dwarf, what can you rely on? What can I do for you? You look a dreadful, a bad knight. What can I do for you? For me, nothing. It's Lot Yonan. He wants to see you in his study. In your mind, you go through all the recent incidents that might have annoyed the Magus. Apart from a few little squabbles with his famuli, nothing worth mentioning happened since the incident with your beard. You nod. Okay. I'd better, better not keep the Magus waiting. waiting. See you later. There's goulash for dinner. Hey, groundling! Come to the kitchen, we need you. Jollison, a fourth degree famulus and your favorite foe among the students of magic, gives you a disparaging glance and disappears without waiting for your reply. Well, guess we're going. Tongue deal! Yeah. Quick! Or the goulash will get burnt! You immediately recognize what the problem is. A chain running over a pulley for positioning the cauldron is detached from its mounting and the cauldron stuck in the fireplace. It's a heavy load, and none of the famuli, who feel superior even during kitchen duty, dare do anything. They might burn their fingers, or even get a bit dirty. Oh, 
Well, let's see what we can do. It'll be a waste of goulash. And I'm hungry. Here, hold this. Talk to the Fabulous. Examine the mounting bracket thoroughly. Repair the mounting bracket. Well, this is a guy that was a jerk, so let's talk to him. Do you remember when you dyed my beard with some magic spell? I had to shave it off. You stroke your beard, which is unusually short for a dwarf. Damn it! Ah, oh, it's heavy! The young human forces through his pursed lips, letting the pot sink a little. Don't you dare ruin my goulash, boy! The cook with beefy forearms glares at the young man, and after a brief moment, he tries harder. With as much concern in your voice as you can muster, you say, Oh, no, no, this doesn't look good. You're pleased to notice he's dripping with sweat. <laughs> I'll get you back for this, groundling! Okay, all we have left to do is repair it. You damned freak! For a moment, you hope the Famulus really does raise his hand to you. But then he comes to his senses and leaves the kitchen, his face bright red. What a pair you are! All right. Now, we better go find that guy. Master Lot Yonan, Frala told me you wished to speak with me. Ah, Tungdil, come in. Uh, there is a bag over there in the cupboard. Take it out, please. It contains artifacts belonging to my former Famulus Goren. I wish to return them to him. He's in Black Saddle, 300 miles away. 300 miles? That's a long journey. Who are you going to entrust with this? I was thinking of you. Me? There is no one better to take on this journey. You have acquired much knowledge. You are almost a scholar. You know more than most family about Girdlegard and its inhabitants. It is time for you to go out into the world and see it with your own eyes. I... with pleasure. What's in the pouch? Maybe I'll meet other dwarves on my way. I'll set off soon. What's in the bag? We're going to go through all Magical the Magical devices. Options for this one. Uh, you better leave the bag closed if you want to avoid any accidents. Dwarves don't really like magic, and magic doesn't like you either. Rackus gave us so much craftsmanship that there's no space left in our bodies for magic. Strictly speaking, every time you've been too close to magic, it has ended in catastrophe. Perhaps I'll meet some dwarves on my travels. Yes, perhaps. But don't hold out too much hope. And be careful who you talk to. Not everyone out there likes dwarves. Yeah, goblins. They abduct baby dwarves and sell them to magi, from what I've heard. Not the best bit of business I've ever done. But what was I to do? The long noses threatened to throw you into the nearest river. Be on your guard. Look after the bag and don't lose it. May Palandiel be with you. And Varakas too, of course. I'll set off immediately. I'll see you soon, Lot Yonan. Okay. So, I think we should go talk to that chick again. <coughs> the one who came and got us. You know, at least say goodbye to somebody. Hello, Frana. Usually give you something in mm -hmm. games like this. I need provisions for 300 miles. I've got a present for you, Frala. So we'll go through both options again. I need provisions for 300 miles. You're grinning from ear to ear. Finally, you've got the chance to see something of the world. 300? Tungdil, that's no errand. That's an epic journey. Wait, I've got just the right thing. But make sure the cook doesn't see. I'm going to Black Saddle to return a few things to a former apprentice in the Magus. You pocket the rye bread, sausages, and ham. Enough food for the first few days of your journey. 
Perhaps I might even meet some dwarves. Perhaps I'll even meet some dwarves on the way. Frala throws you a cautious glance. It's a tricky subject that you can't help but broach. There aren't dwarves down here. You're the only one in Idda's Lane, as far as we know. I know, but I can't just have been born out of a rock. Somewhere in the mountains, I have a clan. Maybe even a family. Yes. Maybe. Frala has reminded you more than once that Lot Yonan wrote to the dwarf clans, and none of them were missing a dwarf boy. I've got a present for you. You take out a symbol of protection that you've carefully made from three horseshoe nails. It's not the finest jewelry in Girdlegard. One look at Frala's face makes it clear that it doesn't matter. She glows with happiness as she takes the pendant. For me? But why? Because you don't see me as an oddity, and you're like a little sister to me. You could have said. But you settle with a shrug and a crooked smile. I have to go. I've got a long journey ahead of me. I wish you the blessing of Palandiel and Vrakas to protect you from all danger in your journey. Here, a talisman. Whenever you look at it, think of me. Frala winks at you mischievously. And of getting me a nice present. All right, let's check our inventory. Okay, it doesn't look like you actually equip gear. <coughs> Off we go. You picture all the fantastic adventures that await you on your journey and are raring to go. But then you think about the possible dangers and ask yourself how you're planning to tackle this journey without a weapon. Ah, good point. Probably back down at the blacksmith we can get an axe or a hammer or something. There was a time when you could hardly lift the heavy hammer. Now you barely notice it anymore and it feels like an extension of your arm. Smithing is in your blood. This is where you swung the forge hammer for the first time 30 cycles ago. No one taught you the craft. It was enough for you to watch Lot Yonan's old smith at work. Whenever the workshop was empty, you practiced and quickly mastered the craft with ease. Okay, I guess there isn't a weapon here. Oh, well, we've got to find one somewhere. Ah. So is this our room? <coughs> I wonder if dwarves ask Vrakus for help on long journeys. The figure on the homemade altar doesn't answer. If I hurry, there we go. I might be back in time for Sonia's birthday. You're longing to see her face when you give her your homemade present. Perfect. try to leave. There we go. How nice to see you again, Lot Yonan. It must have been an age since we last met face to face. Nudin, welcome. Please, sit down. 
No, thank you, my friend. These are urgent matters, and I don't have much time. You must come to Leos Nudin immediately. The perished land is stirring. Are you sure? What makes you think that? I found out about 60 orbits ago, during a visit to the borders. Our magical barriers have weakened and become porous. The Elfa have left their land, and a huge horde of orcs have marched into Girdelgard. Were you able to strengthen the spell with your magic? No. I can't repair the damage alone. We need the combined power of the six. The other four are already on their way here, but we need your help, too. I will set off for Parista without delay. Oh, and um, as you're coming, could you also take the opportunity to bring back the things that I lent to you? Of course. I have them already packed in a bag. Oh, thank you. We'll be expecting you. Utterly blinded by the sunlight, you squeeze your eyes tightly shut after only a few steps. The time spent underground has made you so sensitive to light that you're forced to seek shelter in the shade of a mighty oak. Okay, so we want to go all the way over to there. It looks like we got some. You reach here a small too. lake by a birchwood. <coughs> your feet hurt and your eyes still sting in the unaccustomed sunlight. But a smile spreads across your face nonetheless. You've covered a decent distance on the first day of your big journey. You pitch your camp and lie down to sleep on the hard forest floor. When you awake in the morning, your legs are stiff and achy. Trying not to feel sorry for yourself, you throw your rucksack over your shoulder. You're a dwarf, and dwarves don't complain. We're just gonna go straight there. Around midday, with the sun high in the sky and the first beads of sweat appearing on your forehead, you see something move next to the road, a few hundred meters ahead. Some crows are pecking at something in the long grass. Walk further along the road until you can make out more. Leave the road and sneak up to the crows. Stand still and observe the scene attentively. Let's walk a when little farther. When you see the blood on the ground, you try to convince yourself it's from an animal that just happened to be killed on the road by a hunter. You know this is improbable and your hope disappears completely when you see two human bodies lying in the flattened grass. So, we're gonna be ambushed. That's my guess. You don't see any signs of a struggle in the area where the corpses are lying. Were they stabbed by a companion? A stranger could hardly have crept up on them with such sparse cover. A slender man lies in front of you, dressed in an expensive robe. It is in the colors of Turgur the Fair-Faced, one of the six magi. The dead man must be one of Turgur's famuli. You don't see any wounds. You look down on a tall, broadly built man. He's wearing dark brown leather armor that is strengthened with iron plates. There's a sword lying next to him. Was he trying to defend himself against something or someone? There is no blood on the sword. So this was probably the Alfar. A rucksack that probably belonged to one of the dead. It seems to have been searched and then thrown away carelessly. We'll search through the rucksack. You find a few implements, some provisions, and a map. A route is drawn on it from Parista, Nudin's capital, to Lot Yonan's vaults. I think that's everything. Oh, now we can examine hmm. the bushes. Nothing. Okay. 
Nothing again. You halt. There is something. Another rucksack. Search this one too. You open the rucksack and recognize that someone has already rummaged through it. As well as some implements and writing utensils, you find a pouch full of gold and a talisman. The gold is proof that this is not a case of robbery. It's not a robbery if you're already dead. You give the corpse an apologetic look. The gold coins join the others in your purse. You're gonna take the coins, we'll take the talisman. Warmth and a feeling of security flush through your body as you touch the talisman. You feel safer just holding it in your hand. I'm taking you with me. And that pretty much looks like everything we can do here. You scour the area once more and ask yourself what to do next. Stand, look for further clues, bury the dead, and then continue on your journey, or continue your journey. We'll bury the dead and continue on our journey. It's time-consuming and strenuous work digging shallow graves in the ground with a stick, and covering the corpses with a few stones. But it should at least keep the crows from their feasting for a while. You continue on your way, so as to put a few more miles between you and your grisly find before night falls. Alright. This is where we're going to end this episode, I think. Next episode we'll be able to get over to here, see what that's about, and continue on our way over to Black Saddle. Right? Please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you want me to see. I'll catch you next time.